I don't need to put that up on YouTube. Why not? No, I try comments off. This isn't my first rodeo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. We're only missing three people. We're only missing two people. It's amazing. How many people are missing in your office? I vary between five and eight people here at Classic Wow. Which is kind of impressive. I'm, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see if there's a differential between how people do on the exam between the two sections. So you guys could you guys could claim your position at top of the mountain. All right, so here we are. There's an exam tomorrow. Uh, but it will be out of the way. It's like you gotta you gotta rip the band-aid off, right? Like you gotta show me how well you know this stuff. Uh -huh. Well, okay, yeah. So all we're doing today is uh, we're talking about stuff uh, on the homework, on the review, stuff related to the exam. And if you guys run out of questions, uh, I have things that I can I can talk about. Or if everybody clams up and is super shy, um, so. Ask if you didn't notice, by the way, before I start, if you didn't notice in the exam one stuff, the thing I, I, I said that was called exam one topics actually has questions embedded in it related to those topics. So the review is that PDF. Okay. And also I posted solutions to it earlier today. Yep. Go over everything. Can I go over everything? I don't have enough time to go over everything. Yep. Can you do our integral stuff? Or there was one that was like use the integral to solve yeah okay so let's talk about the integral test. oh by the way i'm going to post the videos of the review from this set. usually i just post one lecture on youtube i'm going to do the review sessions for the first class and this one so that if they're not completely the same you guys get multiple uh there'll be a double the amount of questions answered mm -hmm. so just make sure you check if you want to see what the other section asked and they got answered that'll be up on youtube as well okay so do you want to do, do you want me to do the one i did on the on the sheet uh no just like another example of that or like uh part b in 11.9 the one that was like the integral of p over oh okay that's not an integral test that's integrals by power series yeah yeah, yeah. That's okay, okay okay all right so let, this is a good question let's talk about this okay so you should already know you should already know looking at these things in this class at this point in this class if i give you an integral I'm going to try to write an integral you can't solve with basic techniques, first thing, because I don't want people to get trapped into thinking that they can. It's a class so far on series. The method is going to be a series solution. I'm not trying to trick you. It's a series solution problem. So really what this question boils down to is, how can you turn this thing into a power series? And you have a couple of choices. You could take derivatives and try to discover a pattern and then write it in sigma notation. But that would suck because that's Going to be close to the rule forever. Or you could try to leverage a known series to write that quickly. Everything of this structure we've done the same way. It's with a harmonic, what I call that try the geometric series. Okay. So what I'm what I'm thinking in the background is okay, I bet it's one of these. Probably one of those, right? Because it has that form, except there's this extra T on top. So what I'm going to do is, this is the only hard part of this is the algebraic arrangement of this thing. The T doesn't contribute anything to the series. I could toss it in at the end if I need to. So get it out of the picture and write this. And that is almost a question I can use that geometric series on, but there's a plus here. And when you're using these series, the form has to be exact. What do I do? Take a plus or minus. Or minus or minus because sophisticated big kid mathematicians like us unsimplify. We don't simplify. We go the other direction. Okay. So I have now arranged this function into a form where I could use power series on it. 
I'm going to make sure that I don't lose anything anywhere because this object I can apply that formula to. Because I'm writing this in several pieces, I want to make sure that I remember to come back and put the T back in. Don't forget the T. This is what the sum from n equals zero to infinity of minus T cubed to the n. You might be tempted at this point. So, okay, how did these problems go wrong? You get all excited because you found a power series and then you go to integrate it. So, there's two problems with that. First, we forgot the T. Second, I can't integrate this right now because the power rule doesn't apply because T to the cube is trapped inside this n power. You have to distribute the powers out so you get T all by itself to use the power rule. So, the form that we're going to work with when we're doing derivatives and integrals. This. You've got to split it up so that you've got the T piece by itself and any constant stuff outside of it. Now, do not get tempted into integrating this because this is not what was asked for. This is this part of the function, but it doesn't include the T. And it's really easy to get all excited because you solved something and then you just continue the problem without remembering this isn't what we were asked to integrate. So, so far we are here. The integral of t over 1 plus t cubed dt is the integral of t times the sum n equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n t to the 3n. And there's another pitfall here. You can't integrate this in this form. You don't integrate products, right? The whole, the whole point of calculus, too, with the products of functions are impossible to integrate. So this t has got to be put inside the sum before an integral can be applied to it. It has to be. Constants can be left outside without changing anything. Variables must come in and be combined. So this is the integral of the sum n equals zero to infinity minus one to the n t to the three n plus one. If you integrated this first and then at the end toss in the t, you get a different answer. Okay. Okay, so now what? What am I integrating? Oh, t to the 3n plus 1. Okay, what is the integral of t to the Don't get intimidated by the fact it's in a series. If somebody came along off to the side and asked you what this was, you would write down. Okay. There's a couple ways to go wrong here as well. Remember, when you're adding one, it, it, you're adding one to the whole power, not just the n, but the whole power, right? So it's 3n plus 1 plus 1 divided by 3n plus 1 plus 1. And so this integral is just this. Let's see. So I put it into like I guess uh, these polynomial. Are okay. I did like I made the series of polynomial, yep. and then I put it back into segment notation. All the time. Do we have to put it into segment notation, or can we leave it as a polynomial? So that is a good okay. So that's an excellent question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that generally, if you get to a point where you cannot work with the segment notation, you should always change to the term by term expanded form. Always. Mm -hmm. That should be a move that you should feel comfortable with. Now, unless I otherwise specify, you are absolutely, it's absolutely okay for you to work with the expanded form. Now, I would suggest if you're working with the expanded form that you do enough terms that I see that you understand what's going on, right? So, like a five term form? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want to work, unless I otherwise specify, if I say find it in sigma notation, mm -hmm. like you are always allowed to work in expanded form. Expanded form just takes longer. Right, but sometimes expanded form is the only way to go, and we're going to talk about some questions. And if they don't get asked, I'll talk about questions. So you have to work in expanded form. Others? Yep. Um, how like how similar are the questions on the review unit before? Dead similar. What do you mean? Like, are they like the same with the numbers changed? Like the Not about the same difficulty, or or same difficulty, no harder than what you're seeing on the sheet. Would be a way, a way to phrase that. Yep. Yeah, 
because in that problem we were integrating and then came back. It was a different order that we did things in when we did that, right? We integrate. We we found a series by integration first, and then we multiplied by x. So we did a totally separate thing where, in that in that one we were using the square type argument where we said, oh, we knew f, and we knew its series, and then I integrated f, and I got this series. But then I used this information in a different problem where I had, I had this thing. The integral was the x was outside the integral in that case, and that's why the c picked up the x. Okay, so this one we're not doing that. This is just a straight integration problem. That's in the derivative form. Usually in the derivative form, but yeah. This idea of moving from a known series to an unknown one by integration or differentiation, yes, that's another idea that you could have. Can we do a problem like that? Yes, unless like. Uh, let me do that real quick. I know there's, I've seen a couple of hands up. Let me do this one real quick. Um, so let's actually start with this, right? So if I knew that f of x is equal to the sum, and that is equal to zero to infinity of minus one to the n, x to the n, x minus three to the n uh, over three to the n plus one, which I believe is one over x about a is equal to three. Right, so that series is for that function, right? So if you see one over x and it's expanded about a equals three, this is its power series. That's known. Suppose you just given that. We don't memorize that. No, no, you would derive that if you. I would ask you maybe to build this power series, but no, don't memorize that. That's crazy. I mean, this would be stated in the problem, or this would be the a part of a two-parter, right? So suppose somebody just comes along and says that one over x. Is equal to the sum minus one to the n, x minus three to the n, three to the n plus one. And the question says find a series about a equals three for ten over x squared. So the point is. The derivative of one over x is minus one over x squared, right? In fact, we can make this. Let, let's do the easy version of the question first. Let's just put the minus one here. And the idea is that you have to recognize the derivative of this function is this one. You could rederive the series for this function, but you don't have to. You can use existing knowledge to do it if you see that this derivative relationship holds, right? So the idea is. We've got this little square where one over x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of minus one to n over three to the n plus one. The derivative here gets you minus one over x squared. So if you took the derivative of the series, there's an equal sign that shows up right here. Right? Taking a derivative on this side of the equation gets you the same thing as you take the derivative on the other side. This is how you get power series by differentiation. Again, you don't get intimidated because you realize that all you're differentiating is this guy. And that's easy. The power rule says take the power down, subtract one. Power rule for, I mean, there's a chain rule here, but it's just x minus three. So on taking the derivative, you get this. N, n x minus three to the n minus one over three to the n plus one. So this is taking derivatives to get new power series. The idea is if I can write this equation, I could derive I could take derivatives of both sides or integrals of both sides to get new series for new functions. Hold on, there was one more up here. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. And then I'll get you. From the um, 11 10 homework. Yep. And it's on binomial series. And I know we'll be on the quiz, but like I can't get sure. the right answer. It's okay. Um, so it's find the binomial series for 3 over 6 plus x2 plus x, and then the everything series. Yeah. Everything to the second? No, to the third. Third. Yeah. Okay, so this is 3 times 6 minus x to the minus 3. So th this part of the, the manipulation, I think, is pretty straightforward, right? So this is 
3 over 6 to the third times 1 minus x over 6 to the negative 3? Because mm -hmm. you just factor out 6 3 times and you end up with this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's where the uh, here's the deal is that what mathematic or mathematic, but what, what web assign does not seem to like yeah. is it doesn't really know what to do with this. Yeah. So if you were doing this for me, plus in the binomial form, so it's minus x over 6. If you were doing this for me, that would be sufficient. That's the answer. A series, right? Because what that pattern means that, yep. You also write it out like three, two, one. Dot, dot, yes. Three, yes. Okay. So now what is WebAssign trying to do that it's not telling you here? So what WebAssign wants you to notice is that this thing, because negative three is an integer, this actually algebraically simplifies. So I'm going to write out the n equals five term of this and show you what happens. Minus three. Minus four, minus three times minus four times minus five times minus six times minus seven over one times two times three times four times five. That's the n equals five. Term. Right? Make sense? Five things on top starting at negative three and going down. Five things on bottom because it's a five factorial. The next thing in the sequence would be minus three out to minus six minus seven minus eight over one times. 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. So what is happening algebraically here is if you take out the negatives, and then here there's an even number of things, and so the negatives go away, these numbers cancel these, and you just have 6 and 7 over 2. Here, all of these numbers cancel these numbers, sorry, not those, these right here, and you left with seven and eight over two. So what you're supposed to realize is that you can write this as n plus one times n plus two over uh, over two. And then there's a minus one to the n in here. That once you actually do the algebra, since this was the n equals five term, there's n plus one, there's n plus two. This is the n equals six term, there's n plus one, there's n plus two. So this is what, this is the substitution that WebAssign is looking for. For the for the minus three choose n is that you can just write this instead and you'll get the right answer. Yep. No. You can actually, but then you have to deal with multiplication of power series, right? So you, so we didn't. Uh, I haven't taught you about that. Um, I didn't mention that, but yeah, you could actually, if you had this series, you can figure out the new series by um, like this is total legit. This works. You can replace this with its power series and this with its power series and do like infinite foiling expansion, and the same pattern will follow. So. Um, in fact, frequently computers do it this way instead of taking derivatives because derivatives are expensive. So a computer might actually just do like a Taylor polynomial by just doing like binomial expansion, basically. So yeah, it's mathematically elegant, computationally not that fast a lot of times, uh, but hard to round the board. So yes, you can do it, but probably you wouldn't do it in here. Yep. Uh, you mentioned that maybe like part A of that problem would be finding the power series for one over x. Yes. How could you do that? Yes. Okay, so this is a good one because this is deriving a Taylor series from the definition. This is what this is called, right? So if you had f of x is equal to one over x and you knew that a was equal to three, what would you do? Well, you're going to need some derivatives. F of x is x to the minus one, f prime of x is minus x to the minus two. I'm going to carefully not destroy any patterns. Because unless you have the, 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 like the way that factorials show up in sequence after you simplify them, you should really just expand things. So minus one, minus two, x to the minus two. I, I already see the pattern here. Well, let's plug in the three, see what happens. Maybe I'll go one more. 
the third derivative of f at x is minus one times minus two times minus three times x to the minus four. Okay. All right, so now let's put in the a equals three and see what happens. Again, one third, and then minus one times one over a three squared, and then minus one times minus two times one over a three to the third, and then minus one times minus two times minus three times one over a three to the fourth. I'm positive I see a pattern now. This looks like they're factor. After you take the negatives out, these look like factorials, right? This is negative, this one is positive, this one is negative. I bet the nth derivative at three is, well, the third derivative had a three factorial in it, and the second derivative has a two factorial inside. I have to take the negatives out. And the first derivative has a one factorial. So I bet there is an n factorial. Third derivative had one times two times three. I got to deal with the negatives. So I bet there's a minus one to the n. It flips back and forth between positive and negative. And there's this one over three, but the power of the three is one more than the derivative, right? Third derivative gave you a three to the fourth. Second derivative gave you a three to the third. So I bet this is over three to the n plus one. That expression is the expression for my nth derivative. You don't have to write it in, 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 in so you don't actually have to do this step. You don't have to write this in a unified form. You could do this expanded term by term as well. Wait, so that what are you? Well, you're going to get f of zero plus f prime of or f of three plus f prime of three over one factorial times x minus three, where you're going to have lots of pieces and lots of divisions to do. To see the pattern. Um, it's actually faster if you do this because then you can write this. Okay, well then that means that one over x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the whole reason you want that pattern is because then you can plug it into your Taylor formula, right? And this is the, this is the Taylor formula for a, a series that's centered at three. If a is three, then you shift by three. But I know this. Let's be three here. I know this because I found its formula right here. Um, so n factorial minus one to the n over three n plus one divided by n factorial times x minus three to the n. I mean, the factorial is canceled. It looks like a complex fraction, but all that's happening here is equal. Okay. So what would it look like expanded? Suppose you hate sigma notation with a you know the passion of a burning sun or something. Right. Instead, you say, okay, I'm not doing that. I, just, I refuse to work in sigma notation unless my professor in, explicitly insists that I do it that way. So instead, what you do then is you write this out. Making sure to write enough terms down so that your long suffering professor knows that you understand what's actually going, that you understand what's actually going on here. That three is three over a three factorial times x minus three to the third. But one, two, three, four, maybe he'll, maybe he'll be okay with just four terms, you say to yourself. Well, now you don't need a formula. You could just plug in the numbers that you found over here, right? F of three is a third, right? There it is, there's F of three. That's F prime of three. That's F double prime of three. That's F triple prime of three. So instead you would write one third, plus uh, minus one times one over three squared over one factorial x minus three to the third plus negative one times negative two times one over three to the third over two factorial x minus three to the second. And you can already see I'm getting tired already. I don't want to write any more terms, right? Like so the, the term by term expansion is fine. You can do this. This is still the Taylor theory. And it's hard to work with this. Right. So if I ask you to integrate or something like that, you better write five terms down. I mean, go ahead. And it's not wrong. I mean, I, I actually encourage you, if you don't see how to do something this way, do it this way, because you can make up for the fact that you don't see how the algebra works just by working a little bit harder. Yep. So for a problem like this, yes. 
Yeah, and now yeah, that's basically and what the actual way the question would be worded would be derive the power series. It would say derive the Taylor series from for the function from the definition. So if it says derive from the definition, it means do it this way. What's okay. the okay. To use existing power series to create a new one, right? Like sine of x. Yeah, so another way you could have done this. Uh, actually, you can't really do it this way, but like another approach to finding a power series would actually be, here's the stupidest possible way I can think of to do this. Not stupid, but like long-winded and weird. One over X is actually equal to one over one minus uh, negative X. Uh, so there's just a one in there. And I need there, so I need to put plus one right here, but the series center has to be centered at three. So really what I need to do is, I want one over X, and I want it to be centered at three. So I have to make up for that by adding a four to it, right? And so I end up with one over four plus X minus three. That's not in the right form because that's negative. So I have to write a one over four plus uh, a minus three minus X, that's not right, minus X minus three, but then there's this four. So it's really one fourth of one over one minus I mean, this is, you don't really want to do this, right? Where there's a four now in here. I'm trying to figure out a way to achieve some form I know into getting this function out the other side, but you wouldn't want to do it this way, right? Yeah, I mean, if I, if I give you something where it's not immediately obvious what the known form is, you should do it the other way. I can even give you something you know the series of and ask you to derive it. I could ask you to derive from the definition A series or a Taylor series for uh, f of x is equal to cosine of x at x equals zero. I could just tell, I could ask you to do that. You might know going in with that, I mean, you, every one of you has this memorized. It, yeah, it's like the evens from the, from the exponential, right? So in the back of your head, when you see this, you'd say to yourself, oh, well, I know at least it's this. Now show how we did that. This question would be, would be saying, don't write that down for me because I expect everyone to have that memorized. But instead, show me how the process would go to derive that. Yep. Are we expected to know the limit of arctangent of one over x of x That just arctangent of zero? Zero? Arctangent of zero, zero. Sine of zero is zero, so. Oh, arctangent, it's just zero. Did you put zero in for arctangent and arctangent zero? Because arctangent, the limit of arctangent of x as x goes to infinity is pi over two, right? But then limit of arctangent of one over x. Yeah, as x goes to infinity. Then goes to infinity, that goes to zero. So it's arctangent of zero. Yeah, you should probably know that the arctangent of zero is zero and that the limits are pi over four or pi over two and minus pi over two. You should know that, yeah. Arctangent is a common enough function that you should you should have its basic properties down. And it also is a derivative. I thought that question was easy. Was that not easy? Oh, this is so the, what this is in reference to is in the, let, me, let me write down the question that this is. Uh, the question this is in reference to. So the question asks the following, does this converge? Yeah. So what do you need to know to show that? What test are you gonna use? So now we're not, this is not power series, right? There's no X, there's no, okay, make sure, make sure when you're looking at a question, I know this might seem like I'm overstated the case here, but. If there's no X in the question, it is not a power series, okay? This is just a series of numbers. What, what series of numbers test am I gonna use to check if this converges or not? Because the question says, does it converge? Alternating series, it's alternate, right? Alternates, an alternating series test. Negative one to N. Yeah, right? The negative one to the N makes it go minus plus, minus plus, minus plus, it's alternating series. So what two conditions do you need to check? First is the one you asked about. Oh, well, positive, yes, decreasing and limit zero. limit zero. So you were asking about the limit zero thing here, which is to say, 
what you're asking is so condition one is it the case that the limit it then goes to infinity of the arc tangent of one over n is that zero so the way that you think about this is arc tangent is a continuous function you are allowed to put the limit inside that limit is zero what's the arc tangent of zero here i'll draw again <laughs> Zero. So is that limit zero? Yes. Okay. Second part of the thing says what? What was the second condition? Decreasing. F of x, oh yeah, is equal to the arc tangent of one over x, f prime of x, which is not a bad derivative, one over one plus one over x squared. Times minus one over x squared. Same rule. Oh, you got to take the derivative of the inside function as well, right? You can't forget all your old calculus just because we have new calculus. You got to go back to simpler times when you were just expected to know the derivatives of all the inverse trig functions. Those were the days. <laughs> okay, so is this positive or negative? That's the question. It's that, it, I mean, that's a square, so it's always positive, and that's a square, so it's always positive, and that's adding one to something positive. It's all positive except for this negative one. So this function is negative, which means this is decreasing. I picked this function specifically because it's really easy to see it's decreasing because everything is squared. If you, well, okay. I mean, okay, assuming that you do your previous mathematics correctly, it also okay to just do like two terms of it and then say that n one, plus one, one, two forever. Oh, oh, no, oh, the, oh, n oh, one, oh. the n plus one is less so the, than the, So the problem with doing that is that uh, it, that's not always true. It's not always true, right? I mean, the, the thing is. If you could come up with an inequality that you could show hold for all n, then yes. But are you going to show me algebraically that the arc tangent of one over n plus one is less than the arc tangent of one over n? I mean, can you do that? But I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Can you create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten infinity is also not a valid mathematical argument. Can you just say that? Limit is zero. You can take a point uh, before infinity and say that that point is, you know, more than zero, so it increases. Okay, so that is a good idea, but it doesn't work. <laughs> and the reason that it doesn't work is because there are functions whose limit are zero but they don't decrease. They don't decrease. Right. So you, you can imagine if you had a sine function and it, like and that was something like uh, one over n uh, sine n. Right. This is a function that's going to go like this, and it's going to get closer and closer and closer. If you square that to make it so that it can fall into the Lafayette series test, now you've got something that looks like this. So it doesn't decrease. I mean, it, it, the limit is zero, but it doesn't decrease. And the problem is, it can accumulate enough area underneath to add up to infinity. So the decreasing part is necessary for these things. It's not enough that the limit is zero. It must also be the case it's decreasing to force the area to convert. Yep. How do you show that it's decreasing for the integral plus one, the one over m times the element of the fourth? Yeah. I just, just integrate. Just integrate. No, because you're actually computing the area in that case, right? You don't have to show it's decreasing for an integral. No, you just integrate it. Wait, what are the conditions of the integral? Is this, no, you'd love it for that. Oh, are there any conditions? To Fine. Test? Integral tests. It's not ever continuous positive and decreasing. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's the same thing. The same thing. What do you, mean? you still have to show it's a decreasing function. Yeah. Wait, you have to print off for integral No, look, 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 look. Look. Fine, <laughs> <laughs> you're, oh, you're right. I lied. I lied. I'm so I, lied. Confused. I lied. I lied. Now, with the problem that, that, look, you're right. You were right. I was thinking of a different test. Okay. So, why? Okay, so what? So say you've got this thing that was on the sheet. What is the simplest argument you can make for the fact that that's a decreasing function? Do I expect you to take the derivative? It's all in the denominator. The whole thing is in the denominator. The denominator of this thing is an increasing function, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, is n times the natural? So, okay, 
Is n an increasing function of Zengo's transitivity? Yeah. Is the natural log increasing of Zengo's transitivity? Does yeah. taking to the fourth power change that? No, it makes it increase faster, right? So I've got this thing that's increasing. Now it's decreasing. That's just that. This increases, so therefore this, I would say, n log n to the fourth increases. So one over n log n to the fourth decreases. I, that's, that's just what I would say. So the thing log is like the arc tangent, like one over n decreases, but like arc tangent. No, because now you've got, you could write me an essay about how the fact that this arc tangent is an increasing function because its argument is working in an inverse manner because we flipped it upside down. The argument is decreasing as x increases, so therefore arc tangent, which is normally an increasing function, is now decreasing. Sure, you could do that, or you could just slap down this one line derivative and say it's negative. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. You want to write me an essay? You write me an essay. Just give me some justification for you believe it's decreasing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would just do I, that's literally what I just did. I didn't say anything. I just said, look, there's a bunch of squares and a negative sign. Right? The laziest possible way to do this would be not minus one times something positive, right? Like that's <laughs> like <laughs> yes. Circle of star signs. I mean, I okay. I know I've let the cat out of the bag with the lobster thing, so I just there was only in one section though. So if I'm gonna get a lobster this semester, there's like four or something in here. What else? Can you get extra credit for all lobster? No, the previous lobster got a pity point. <laughs> because the dude, got, the dude got like a 10 out of 100 on the exam or something like that. <laughs> like he had so much time. The reason he had enough time to draw an anatomically correct lobster <laughs> that looked like it came from a biological field guide was because he didn't do any math. <laughs> if, you can draw an, if you can draw an anatomically correct lobster really quickly, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> What you should think is the good karma associated with entertaining me, entertaining me with high quality mathematics on your exam. That, that's going to create the good mood that you need me to be in when I read your test. It's, it's, it's horrible. Well, the lobster more like it depends on the lobster. <laughs> anyway, math. What else? There's plenty of things to talk about here. Yep. Yes. And usually in those cases, they, it should be obvious like that the functions are decreasing. It's like if you get something where it's all in the denominator and the denominator is increasing, that's just something you can say in one line. Yep. So an integral, we actually have to like do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I because the alternating <laughs> because the alternating series test is related to the alternating series test is actually related to the integral test. It has to do with the area that accumulates underneath the function. Yep. Assuming this will be on the test, could you do um, the the series? Uh, n squared minus n all over to the n. Someone explained to me yesterday, but do you think it is? Sure. Yeah. So that 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 one specifically won't be on the test, but the idea behind it, like, so the thing about that, the thing about that question is, you were given information about that question, right? So that question was part of a class. So the, the series that's being asked about here is n squared minus n all over to all over two to the n. Yeah. So. The, the previous question, the previous part of this question told you, I believe, um, uh, what was the function you guys were working with? It was just one over one minus X, right? It's like you had one over one minus X was equal to the sum of X to the N from N is equal to zero to infinity. And so then it told you that one over one minus X to the second is equal to the sum of n times x to the n, n equals one to infinity. Yeah. And then it also said at some point you also did the derivation that if you took another derivative of this thing, that minus two, sorry, two over one minus x to the third was equal to the sum from n times n minus one, x minus one, minus two. This was given information on the question, right? Okay. So given that these things were all stuck together, what you're supposed to know is, okay, so look, two over one minus X to the third is equal to this sum. Uh, X minus two, and that's almost what this is. 
almost what this is, because that looks like this. And what is n squared minus n? It's n times n minus one, and then there's a one half to the n sitting right here, right? But this has a n minus. So if if this had an n minus two right here, I could sum the series just by plugging it back into this function, right? If this had an n minus two, this would be equal to two over one minus one half to the third. If the power matched this formula, I could evaluate it just like this. Does that make sense? Okay, but it doesn't have an n minus two, it has an n. So how do I fix it so it matches that structure? Okay. Take off the two that you wanna get rid of and put it out here. And now that function, so this is the power series for this function, but with an extra x squared stuck to it. Now let's put one half into that. Make sense? Okay, I mean, the specific to this particular question, but the idea here is the big manipulation here is uh, ignore the one half for a second. The fact that I, um, I mean, I can do these sort of manipulations. If I have a series where uh, this is known that the powers don't match, I'm allowed to also take X's out to make the forms match, right? This is a form matching type of question. I actually have a solution to this, to this question written up. I don't think I posted it yet, but I, I wrote it out by hand. So that's, I, I'll get that up on Canvas today sometime. I mean, this is beyond what I would put on a test, right? Like this kind of manipulation where you've got to work backwards. This worked on a homework because it was like a five part question where it was all sort of like developed from one idea. But I don't have time to ask you five scaffolded questions on one concept. What else? Yep. Um, would you uh, write the power series for f of x equals x squared and sine of x squared? Yes. I just say power series. I should have said McLaurin series. I think I said I, 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 I meant to write a equal zero, right? Is the idea. Okay, so we're going to assume if I don't give you a center, you assume that it's zero, right? That's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so what I think here is I have no idea what the power series power series of this function is, but I do know the power series of sine of x squared because I know that. So I'm going to think of this as okay, the trick is I might have extra pieces floating around outside. Wait, is, it, is it sine squared x or sine x squared? I guess is the first question. That's the one I wrote in the sheet and not the one from the homework. Okay. So I know how to deal with this. Now, everybody in here, quickly, again, remember hard that you're really going to want to know that the sine of x minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1 factorial. There's only four things to learn. That's one of the ones you got to know. Okay, so if that's the sine, what's the sine of x squared? Okay, plug it in. Yes, x squared to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. If I've been asked to do an integration or something on this problem, I probably want to make sure I've got this all multiplied out so I can integrate or differentiate it. Right, because it's not a power series right now because the form's not right. The x squared is trapped inside of this exponent. So I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to write it as sine of x squared is equal to sum from n equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n power to a power multiplies so you get x to the four n plus two over two n plus one factorial. Sweet, I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. Oh crap, I forgot the x squared, and that would be a tragedy. One okay, so this is a right answer, but it's not a power series yet because it's x squared times the power series. Mm -hmm. So you got to get the x squared inside. Right? Multiplying in the x squared, 
just put this up here in this power. X to the 4n plus 2 plus 2 is X to the 4n plus 4. Oh, is this supposed to be integrated? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's make, well, maybe we should think about what its radius of convergence is. Then we can talk about integrating. How do I do radius of convergence? Ratio. Ratio. All right. Why do you do that? Why does, I mean, because like, normally when you do a power series, Getting a power series is part part of getting a power series is finding its radius of convergence. I mean, you can. It doesn't really. I mean, if the question says calculate the power series, find the radius of convergence to integrate it, you can do it any order you want as long as all the pieces are there. I mean, technically, integrating is not justified unless you're operating in the radius of convergence. But if you find the radius of convergence based on the integral, integration doesn't change radius of convergence. Integration and differentiation preserve the behavior of the function. So you're never going to make the function worse by integrating. Yep. Ah, okay. So whenever I ask you to calculate, if I say find the radius of convergence, I mean only the radius of convergence, which means just do the ratio test. You don't need to worry about dealing with uh, endpoints. If I give you an endpoint question, it will say find the interval of convergence, right? Find the interval of convergence means find the interval with the endpoints included. So when we do Taylor series, we never work in the in the on the boundary. We only work in the interior. So I will use the language find the radius on those questions. Okay. So finding the interval means check the endpoints. I mean that's not supposed to be a trick question. Find the interval means find the actual interval. Find the radius just means do the ratio test. Oh, do we want to integrate this? Yes. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, integrate that. What am I integrating? This dude right here. What's the integral of x to the 4n plus 4? Four? Four. Increase the power by 1, not the n, the whole power, divide by the new power. Don't get intimidated by the rest of the constants because they're just constants. Minus 1 to the n, x to the 4n plus 5, because you've increased the power by 1, the 2n plus 1 factorial that was already there. And the power rule says you divide by the new power. Am I done? No. Every calculus instructor's favorite point to take off. And why do we do it? Because engineers hate us when we, when we don't enforce this on you guys, because then you solve problems without initial condition. Will I ever ask you to find the plus C in this, uh, in this exam? No. You have your whole life of differential equations to, to do that. Solve initial value problem. You can find the C. If I told you, really what the C is here is the value of the function at zero. So F of zero is the, is the value at C. But the thing is, you don't know what F is. This is, you've integrated this function, but I'd have to tell you something about what I want the initial condition to be. Right? Yep. Why did we integrate that function? Because the problem asked. Is that all it said? The problem said, find a power. It said the problem, the way the problem was written was, Part B, I think, was find a or maybe part A, find a power series for this function. And part B was now integrated. Oh. So yeah, no, it, we don't just randomly, you know, if you want to just randomly integrate everything on the exam, you're welcome to. But no, I'll try to specify when I want that to happen. So yep. It's technically the case that, like, I'm not going to ask you to find a power series without also telling you to find the radius of convergence, right? So, technically, calculus only works on the radius of convergence. In this particular case, you could guess the radius of convergence is going to be infinity because the power series for this has radius infinity. This one, we didn't derive it, so we don't even need to ratio test this. The radius for sine of x squared is infinity. Plugging x squared into it doesn't change that. So the radius here can be derived from the radius for sine x. You could just write r is equal to infinity because you've just plugged it into something that converges everywhere. Yep. Are you going to, like, when you ask us a question like this, are you going to tell us to find the radius convergence or is that something we're supposed to do? No, no, I'll tell you. I'll okay. tell you. I'll, I'll tell you. Find the power series and radius of convergence. That's, I mean, the way I would write this is f of x is equal to this. Find its power series and radius of convergence. Part b, find the integral of the function. Okay. All right, dudes. I'll be on Slack. You can hit me up on email. If you ask me a question I haven't gotten back to you yet, come harass me about it. Like, like I've had a million things going on because we're hiring two people. 
Thank you. Yep. See you tomorrow. Get some sleep. Do it. Okay. 